That's two for dinner, one for each of us. The thought a guy would wow. get so pumped up over shooting. That's, <laughs> dude, that thing is dead. What's up, guys? We just crossed the state line into Idaho. It's a little afternoon right now. We've driven most of the way. We've still got four or five hours yet. Uh, but hopefully we're on the mountain yet this evening and maybe we can even glass up an elk before it gets dark. made it up to camp it's like 10 30 11 o'clock at night it's pretty late it's pretty late we're pretty tired we just got done eating just laid down for bed and uh we actually came across a group of cows tonight i think there's at least 14 of them from what oh, i there's saw a bunch of them. there's a bunch of them cows calves all within 100 yards dylan actually got some good good video of them on his dslr and uh, slowly worked their way down the hill and didn't wind us. We had a good wind, but we waited probably half an hour and started walking our way back up here. And sure as heck, they spooked and it sounded like a oh, herd of wow. elephants going through the trees. It was insane. Yeah. But we kept hearing bugles right over the top of this mountain and uh, we're actually camped right up on top. Couldn't find a super flat spot. So uh, we're sitting at kind of an angle a little bit, but we got really high hopes for the morning. We're sitting on this saddle and there's a heck of a trail crossing. And we're hoping we can get some glass going and uh, find something close and heck, it would not surprise me one bit if there's a giant bull comes walking over the, cro the top of this and I can shoot him. So yeah. I've never been in the elk like this on over-the-counter public land in my entire life. This is incredible. We had three hours of daylight and I don't even know how many elk we saw. It a lot. A <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> we're super excited for tomorrow. We brought enough food up here for four days we're gonna see if we can make something happen oh we'll make something happen <laughs> see you guys in the morning
the bull and the cows worked up the mountain, we knew we had to make a move. Saw a huge bull tonight separate from the other one. He was actually on the other side of the mountain with a bunch of cows. There's at least 15 of them together. And uh, we watched one cow come out of the bottom where we saw the bull go this morning. Did not see that bull. We saw two other hunters walking out with their headlamps right at last light. So I think we're gonna focus on the south side of this mountain tomorrow. We're really hoping we can find that big bull again and hopefully watch him bed. How many cows are in there? I don't know. I see probably 10 right now. 
You think they're gonna bed in that same spot as yesterday? It's hard saying. I bet I wouldn't be surprised if they just bed all over this hillside. Hopefully we can get eyes on him. That'll be super beneficial. I'd have the spotter pointed that way. I've got it on the cows. Okay. As the sun continued to rise, the elk filtered through the thick pines on the mountainside. It didn't take long before he found the bowl from the night before, and as luck would have it, he bedded down right in front of us. Our luck didn't last long as the cows led him into a group of dark shaded timber right at the base of the mountain. It was time to make a move. We scaled down the steep, rocky slopes, circling around the mountain to intercept the herd of elk with hopes of challenging the bull. That was an elk. Was that a cow? It might have been a light bugle. I can smell them. That's a bugle. That's him. He's up in there. Yeah, he is. All those cows are talking. They're all talking. I've never hunted such a We don't really know what to think. We just watched pretty much the whole herd, including that herd bull, go up and over the top of that mountain. And as far as we know, we did not spook them at all. They didn't really look spooked. They were walking pretty slow and never really looked back down the mountain at all. I mean, we were 225 yards from where we last saw them this morning, kind of in their bedding grounds, real thick pines in there, pretty flat. And uh, we, let a few, out a, we let out a few cow calls and they were talking back to us and that bull was bugling. It sounded like he was just on the back side of that. And we just waited because I thought, man, maybe they'll slip in. But I don't know, they either didn't like something or they wanted to go over that way anyway. 
the wind is so shifty here, they could have easily smelled us, but it's hard to know for sure. All over the mountain we go. I suppose we'll get up there and do some more glassing. Maybe cut them off at one of these days. <laughs> They're always moving. They don't bed down in one place for the day, especially this time of year. Yeah. Um, our best odds of killing one is watching one go over from this hill to that hill and us being on the backside of it. I think it'll be hard to watch them come from this way over, but not impossible if those other hunters spook them towards us on any of the saddles. Yeah. Um, if we're gonna make a move on elk, we gotta do it quick. We gotta approach them the fastest way possible. And the old ones don't come to calls. And, and the old ones don't come like to us. calls. Maybe some of them old timers have been calling out for years. Maybe they can do it, but I I'm sure don't. if you got that bull in the right attitude, anybody could call it in. But they haven't been able to yet. They haven't been able to yet. No one has yet. Not that one. That's an old bull. Son and I climbed this mountain all the way up to the saddle where we watched all the elk cross. Just ate a little bit of lunch and uh, just looking at the topo maps and kind of looking out behind us. We have a good idea where we think they're probably bedded. We're going to slowly work our way down there and at least class into it. We're probably not going to go in there and try to make a move tonight. Uh, but we'll probably swoop around this giant mountain here in front of us and get back on the glassing hill for this evening. See if we can make a game plan for tomorrow. The longer we're up here, the more we learn about these elk. So Hopefully we can spot someone and make a plan for the next day. this ridge we have not seen a bull yet uh, but we've seen there's 12 cows on this ridge line working across they're gonna come right over top of this saddle we're trying to determine uh, what what height they're gonna cross it at and we're gonna see if we can set up on them the winds blowing from the south they're on the north side of it so it's gonna be blowing right to them but I'm really hoping that the thermals coming off that mountain are blowing down so if I can stay below them hopefully they can cross above me and I can get a shot pushing them. Yeah. Should have just stayed at camp this morning, I guess. We glassed up that big bull, the first one we 
saw the very first morning with a bunch of cows and there's another smaller bull with them that's still pretty nice we're about 500 yards away from them right now the thermals are kind of switching but we've got the wind in our face but we're going to slowly move in see if we can make a play got right into him put a cow had his pegged pretty much we stood there for over half an hour and uh there's, there's a, a tree between us and her i don't think Joe can see her on the camera but uh she bolted out of there and took the rest of the elk with her we went a little ways north on this mountain and we heard one of the bulls bugling way down in this bottom down in the creek that's pretty much the only place we haven't been to yet way down there so we're gonna basically make a big loop around the wind's mostly out of the south so we're gonna get down in that creek the creek flows to the north uh, with the thermals and everything the wind should be right in our face we're gonna slowly walk our way up the creek and uh, see if we can find them sweet got some dehydrated refried beans with some minute rice and some taco seasoning boiled up some water here we're gonna put it in it brought up some cheese and some fritos with me i'm gonna have a little tortilla soup at the last couple days for lunch and it is phenomenal Dang, that smells good. <laughs> About as good as a meal gets on the mountain. Alright, here's the finished product. But we've got to add the Fritos. Stir them in. We've got ourselves a tortilla soup. And it's about as good as it gets for eating on the mountain. Dylan, how's your lunch? Oh, just great. What are you eating? Uh, ramen, instant rice, and tuna. <laughs> All mixed together. Looks good. Yeah, it's not as good as yours. <laughs> it's good, though. Couldn't ask for a better spot, though. No. still hunting along this ridge hoping to catch up with the bull we saw this morning. We came across two hunters from California. They're set up on a wallow down below. They came in from a long ways away. There's a trailhead two or three miles down. Crossed over top of the mountain and walked the bottom all the way up and set up there. They've been camped back here about as long as we have, four days they said. They've been getting in on bulls back in the trees. Got it down low in the darker timber but they haven't seen any cows hardly. Which is crazy because almost all we've seen has been cows. We've only seen three different bulls the whole time classing. So it's good to know that there's more bulls back in here. But we're just going to still hunt all the way back up to camp. By that time it'll be about time to class for the evening. So we'll see what we can spot. Well, it's the morning of day four. Dylan and I made it up to the glassing point again this morning and the smoke really filled in the mountain range this morning. We couldn't see out very far. Uh, the main ridges that we've been watching, we didn't see any elk on. Uh, we did see three or four off in the distance, uh, but it was so smoky we could hardly even see them. We think there was a bull in their base because we heard a bugle, uh, but we didn't really see where they went. Um, as we were glassing up there, we also watched two more hunters working their way up from the road with a decoy and uh, kind of working their way up towards this saddle. So uh, with limited elk sighting and uh, I've been kind of pushing these elk around these last four days, uh, we decided we're gonna pack up camp. We already packed up the tent and all that. And uh, we're gonna kind of slowly still hunt down the mountain, uh, let out a few bugles in the uh, opposite basin over here to the west and kind of do a big curve back to the truck and hit a new, loca new location for the rest of the trip. We got, I don't even know, four more days left for sure. So. Uh, we're looking to make something happen. You okay? Yeah. Huh? 
Howdy. This is slick. <laughs> this is super duper slick. Yeah, it is. About halfway down. There's the truck way down there in the bottom. Got a long ways to go and a long ways to get to the next spot. Hopefully we can get the camp set up before dark. I just looked over and I was like, that's a funny looking stick. <laughs> it's my first oak shed. It's a booner too. <laughs> oh, just a freaking tank. That's awesome, dude. God, we're only like 500 yards from the truck. Yeah, we've hardly gotten anywhere. <laughs> a little chalky. Maybe a couple years old, but you know what? It's a shed. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Nux. <laughs> Thanks, man. Sweet, man. I told you I wanted to find an oak shed. <laughs> Heck yeah. We just keep accomplishing every goal, don't we? That's right. So you wouldn't have found that if we killed one at the last spot. I guess. What goals do you have left? To film you killing elk. All right. Yeah. Let's get her done. been elk killed here before. Sign's pretty limited this year. I think it's because it's so dry. There's a little bit of water up here, but not a lot. But we're just about to the top of the mountain. We're gonna crest over to the other side and there's a good northwest facing slope there. Thick trees, so we'll do some bugling down in there, check the sign, just see if there's anything around before we head back to camp and pack up and move on to the next spot. Well, Don and I made the long trek back down to the truck. We didn't see any elk in there, not even any fresh elk sign whatsoever. There's a few small rubs from earlier in the year, uh, but no real fresh trail elk tracks or, uh, or poops. So made it back to the truck with, uh, with about three, three and a half days of hunting left. Uh, we kind of made the game plan that we're not gonna be jumping around from place to place. We know there's elk at the first place we went to. We knew there was a lot of people going in there. Uh, we're just going to approach it from a different side off of a different road, come in off a trail, uh, set up camp tonight, and hopefully we'll be into the elk again for at least the next three days. So that's all we can hope for is uh, get back on them and see if we can make something happen. Grouse, like 10 yards away. We're going to see if we can get us some dinner. I'm shaking. <laughs> Grouse for dinner, boys. <laughs> what a shot. <laughs> That's two for dinner, one for each of us. I'm uh, excited. I was worried I didn't bring enough food dude. up here. <laughs> Who would have thought a guy would wow. get so pumped up over shooting? For That's, dude, that thing is dead. Yeah. What you got there, old killer? Got dinner. <laughs> That's right. Each of us. Heck yeah. There's a few more up in the tree, but we're going to save them for tomorrow's night's dinner. Heck yeah. Nice job. Thanks. Yep. Still plenty on the mountain, too. We got one there. Where's this other? Oh man, that one's close. Look at them things. I can see four of them right now. Not a care in the world. Five of them. Dylan and I made it up to camp here at the saddle. We got our grouse that we shot for dinner, so we're gonna breast them out and take the meat, cook them up over the campfire. It's gonna be delicious. So right now we're cooking the grouse that Josh shot just, what, probably an hour and a half ago in 
the oil from a can of oysters that I packed up. I love these little oysters and Josh does too. So we took the oil, put it in the pot, and now we're frying the grouse in it. Uh, we both already ate some and it's very good. And then we got a little grill for the other one we're going to grill up on the rock. Authentic mountain meal right here. Some good stuff. It's as good as it gets. That's what it's all about. Look at that. They fry up just like at home. Right out of the oyster oil. <laughs> right out of the oyster oil. Tastes just like oysters, don't it? Yeah, it really does. If if you're a fan of oysters, this just tastes like a meteor smoked oyster. Really good. Not much for stars with the smoke. Unfortunately not. A couple of them nights though is gorgeous. Pretty incredible when you walk out and step out of the tent and it's just like stars in your face. In silence. I remember last year when I drove out to Wyoming, the day before season, I got in super late and so I just slept in the back of my truck. But I basically rolled up, got everything out of the bag, put my sleeping bag in the back of the truck and like when I laid down I looked up and a feeling hit me like I've never ever felt. What was it? Like, it was like overwhelming just looking up and looking at the stars yeah. and just knowing where I was and how lucky I am. It was overwhelming and I'd be lying if I said it, I didn't shed a few tears. Like, it was deep. That was one of the deepest moments I've probably ever experienced in my life. That's awesome, man. It was nuts. Wouldn't get to experience if it experience if you weren't out there bow hunting. That's the crazy thing. That's like when I posted that buck on social media I'd said that that like I appreciate that animal for taking me to a place that most people see as just this desolate little hole in the middle of America that nobody <laughs> yeah. would want to go to and I mean it's nothing but oil derricks and flat sagey ground but like I rolled up there and it's like you can see the glow of all the oil derricks off gassing in the distance and like you wake up and you're just surrounded by antelope and mule deer and there's just a life that people don't get to see because they don't have any reason to. Right. They make their assumptions but then these things that we chase are like this is the places that they bring us. Today is the morning of day seven. Dylan and I hiked into this spot last night. It's a couple miles west of where we first set up for the first three or four days we were out here. I'm kind of glassing to the east. I can see the same hillside that we had some close calls on uh, over the course of those first few days when we were camped over there on that saddle. Dylan's back behind me. He's glassing to the west. Uh, haven't seen any elk yet. There seems to be a lot more hunting pressure back in here. We're, uh, we're a little over three miles off the road and there's quite a few tracks coming over this saddle on this side. I'm guessing because we're only a mile and a half from the trail. Um, it looks like it's the best spot. There's a spring with a creek right down below me and tons of green grass. Uh, kind of an elk paradise as long as they're not being boogered out of here by hunters. So this is kind of our, our last true full full day of hunting. Uh, so we're just going to try to stay up high, try to get our eyes on an elk and see if we can make a move. Um, doesn't seem like anything's talking. It seems like it's warmed up just a little bit over the last few days and we haven't heard much for bugling at all. Of course, we were in a spot that didn't have any elk too, so that didn't help. But uh, I think with uh, slightly warmer temperatures and the increased hunting pressure, uh, the bulls are staying a little bit quieter, but it does not mean that we can't make something happen. So we're staying after it. We're gonna glass as much as we can today and see if we can turn up anything. There's a spike pushing this cow right up this grassy draw. They're going right towards the saddle where we camped this morning. We're gonna try to get down and cut them off. I'm not sure if they're gonna cross or not, but at least we'll be closer to them.
they're coming right up the saddle which is exactly where our camp's at and the wind's blowing kind of out of the west blowing down that saddle right into that grassy patch and sure as heck they got probably 300 yards from our camp and that cow could smell us and her smell our campsite and they turned around and slowly walked off back into the trees we kind of saw them walking up through the trees going back up towards a bench up on top so we're gonna go back to our glassing spots and uh, I'll see if I can watch where these go and maybe Dylan can turn some up on the west side but back to square one <laughs> After Dylan and I watched that spike and that cow walk into the trees here to the east, Dylan went back to his glassing spot and he spotted a bull that's injured. It looks like it was either shot or got in a fight, uh, kind of in its upper middle back. And we watched it walk almost a mile all the way up to the mountain and bed right at the top in a bowl where we think he's bedded there. There's a small group of trees there. We did not see him go over the top of the mountain, but we could see to the left and to the right. He's gotta be in there somewhere. We're gonna take a long trek all the way around this entire bowl and see if we can get on top of him, put another shot in him, hopefully take him out. So <clears throat> it's kind of what we've been waiting for the whole time is find a single bull, watch him bed, and move in for a shot. So it took until the, the seventh day to get this opportunity, but we're gonna see if we can make the most of it. That was steep, wasn't it, Dylan? That's nuts. The things we do for elk. <laughs> A long ways up here. Wow. That's crazy. That elk is right over there. Dylan and I have made it about halfway up here on the top of this mountain. Saw a couple billy goats. <laughs> that was cool. But I think uh, I think the descent down to get closer to him is going to be a lot easier than the descent up. Hard part's done. Hard part's done. Time to go kill one. Do it.
one shot and we lost the blood trail. So it's not, not the best scenario in the world. We would have loved to have been able to stick the arrow in that bull and at least put him out of his misery, but they're tough animals. He might even live from it, so. We're just gonna go back, grab the bags, head down the mountain, get water, and then head all the way back up across, back to camp. Maybe we can class something up for this evening. <coughs> Well, it's the evening of the 15th. We've been glassing this little bowl down here, kind of where a creek starts and there's a nice meadow for almost about an hour and we have not seen an elk yet. But this is the same place, just a mile and a half, two miles across where we first camped when we first got here the first few days. And uh, you know, one of the days we know darn well there was at least 50 elk in this whole basin. And like I said, we can see we can see probably 30 to 40 percent of this place and we haven't seen an elk yet in the last hour so the pressure has definitely increased not only from us but from a lot of other hunters in the area uh, there's a lot of people that aren't afraid to pack in in this spot in particular uh, lots of boot tracks especially on this side a lot of boot tracks so it seems like a lot of the bulls have quieted down not as many bugles everybody we've talked to hasn't heard any and uh, i think it Personally, I think it has more to do with the pressure uh, than the weather, because, uh, I mean, the weather really isn't all that much different than it was when we yeah. first got here. It's stayed the same. So. Smoke's rolled in, but I don't think that's affecting it. Yeah, that shouldn't have a play. But nonetheless, we got be beautiful scenery tonight. We're gonna go back to camp and cook up some mountain houses and uh, call her a night. Be back at her in the morning. Dark and early. Dark and early. <laughs> Good eye. <night. laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I might have been looking for my goats over there. <laughs> I'm a little salty I didn't get pictures of it yesterday. <laughs> One day we see Mount Goat. Forget my camera. Well, didn't forget it, I just left it. I didn't want to carry it. Never again. It's more the hunting pressure than anything. It's cool this morning. 
morning. It is. I figured if they would have been talking any morning, it would have been this morning. But they very well might not be in here. Are you still recording? Yeah. This is our last morning. So Dylan and I, we came up this draw. This is the same draw we saw the big six by six bull and all the cows. First few days of our hunt. When we were glassing up on the mountaintop up there, we always saw elk in here and they always came to this tree patch to bed in. So being the last morning, Figure we just come in here. We had to camp at the truck last night. And uh, we came in here. We kind of set up almost right in the middle of these trees. Our wind was going down to start. Most of them usually come from kind of the right side. So we kind of just set up, set up tight. And was hoping maybe we could get our, catch our luck and get something to stroll through. But we haven't heard a beep this morning out of anything. I'm not sure there's an elk in this, in this drainage at all. Pretty much about the end of it, unless we get real lucky walking back to the truck. <laughs> Anything can happen out here in the Elk Woods, but it's been an awesome trip. We've had some awesome, awesome experiences. Dylan and I were walking back to the truck last night. It's about 10 o'clock when we got to the trailhead, and there's five horses coming down the trail, three hunters with headlamps, and on one of the back horses, you can see through the hunter's headlamp was a huge 5x5 five five bull elk riding on the back of that horse. Dylan saw it first and he waved me over and we were looking at it. And it kind of just struck us in awe. I mean, we were like little kids looking at something for the very first time. I mean, Dylan was losing sleep over it last night. <laughs> After all the miles we've put in and all the mountains we've climbed, it's we know just how hard it is to earn a bull like that. And uh, it's just magical to see that. So. We didn't fill our tag on this trip, but we've definitely got a lot of memories and we've learned a ton, that's for sure. I don't know about Dylan, but I can't wait to get back out here. <laughs> I know it's been good. Alright, Josh and I are finished up here in Idaho. Uh, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about what this trip was for me, because Obviously, I don't have a bow. I don't have a tag. I was just here following Josh around and trying to learn about this whole elk hunting thing for myself. You know, I've, I've had minimal experience in other states, uh, well, Colorado, and this was a complete turnaround for me in terms of what I want to do with elk hunting because just being up here and watching the elk that we've watched and being able to experience the things that we've experienced, like, this is definitely an addiction that'll last my entire life. And there's gonna be many, many, many more elk hunts uh, in my future, and I know in Josh's future, and I'm sure we'll be doing many together. Uh, it's pretty amazing, because if it's something that you haven't done, you have such a a different perspective on it than when you've actually been here. You've actually seen the animals. And if it's something that you want to do, but maybe don't have the money or maybe don't have the time, make it happen because it's something I can't describe to a camera or I can't describe no matter what I do. You have to be here and you have to see it and you have to watch the animals. And it'll change your life honestly it's it's unbelievable and i appreciate josh letting me come along and i appreciate everything about this place can't wait to do it again i really can't it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be a long year of waiting till next september <laughs> should have